In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lappin brought to you by First Star Logistics, we visit with defensive coordinator Lou Anarumu coming off a, a battle against the Chicago Bears. They gave up 206 yards offense to the Chicago Bears. Unbelievable. In the red zone, they only scored one touchdown in three possessions. That's winning football defensively. But it takes all three phases, offense, defense, special teams, heartbreaking loss for the defense up in Chicago. Now all they have to do is go to Pittsburgh and take on the, the perennial winner, Pittsburgh Steelers. A lot of history, a lot of tradition. Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're coming off a tough loss. Big division implications here. Got to go to Pittsburgh and play hard. And this defensive football team has been playing hard for Lou Anarumo. Welcome to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics and our special guest, defensive coordinator, Lou Anarumo, to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals' performance the first two weeks of the season. And coach, it's been uh, it's been really, really strong. I mean, your uh, your defensive football team two weeks in here, top ten in in a bunch of categories. I mean, uh, tied for tenth in points allowed, the most important. And when you look at it, there's a pick six involved in that. You know, you had nothing to do with that, so you should be in the in the top ten even higher. Um, and I mean, yards yards per play, uh, rush rush per play. <laughs> Pass, pass per pass attempt. Up and down the board, it's been very solid. Uh, how do you feel about things at this stage? <clears throat> uh, yeah, good. You know, we, it's, uh, right. it's, uh, uh, it's certainly um, uh, gotten off to a good start. But, uh, you know, the guys, you know, we just left meetings here a little bit ago, and they know the number one thing is to win the game. And, uh, and yeah, we, we, we started fast and, and really uh, – at the end of the day, yesterday just comes down to get making one more stop and one more play, pick up the fumble, you know, stop that last third down, and you know we can we can come come out of the Chicago with a win, but it just didn't go that way. It's amazing. Logan Wilson had a chance, had an opportunity to score two defensive touchdowns potentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, the strip sack by Hendrickson, if it if he gets it on a scoop and score, and then the interception, make one guy miss. I mean. He could have he could have come up with a, a fumble recovery touchdown, an interception return yeah. touchdown. I mean, crazy, but uh, is, that's what you're looking for out of him—the playmaking opportunity, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, and uh, he's he's making the most of his opportunities, and uh, certainly it showed up. You know, Trey had the good sack fumble, and um, you know the ball's there. We just we got to we got to make that play, and you know, like you said, we we were able, fortunate enough to. Uh, you know, he has a kind of a knack, Logan does, of showing in the rush and then popping out. He got a couple picks from that uh, last year. Um, so he's doing a good job. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing good team defense right now. We are, and, and we just got to keep it up. You uh, face two high-quality running backs um, in two pretty good run schemes. Yeah. You control both of them. You know, as, as you always say, you stop the run and earn the right to rush the passer. And you've earned that right, and you got six quarterback sacks you know, in two games. Um, so it's it's going according to plan as such. I mean, no, nobody's been able to establish the run so far on you, Coach. Yeah, but knock on knock on wood. I hear you. Uh, you keep it that way. And, um, you know, we, we got a big challenge this week. You know, again, uh, that running back, he's, he's a rookie and all this and all that, but he's a big, strong guy, um, you know, and, we you know, we can't let those guys get going either. But so far, so good. Yeah, back uh, back in the day, I'm, I'm going back in the time machine, the way back machine. But uh, when we played the Steelers, they had a guy named Harris. His first name was Franco. You know? Yeah, he wasn't too bad either. He wasn't too bad, Hall of Famer. No. Now there's Najee Harris. I mean, I don't know what's the deal with the Harris boys uh, at yeah. the running back position. This kid's pretty good, though, huh, Coach? He is. Y'all, he's big, strong guys. He's tough. He runs hard. And he's powerful. He stiff on one of the guys from Vegas yesterday, and kind of sent him flying into the first row. So, um, you know, he's, he's a strong, powerful man. And, and uh, you know, they're trying to get him the ball and, and, and take, take some pressure off. But he's a good player. We've got to be ready for him. So up front, the, the Steelers are kind of uh, revamping themselves a little bit. They get a couple of rookies starting. Villanueva, mm -hmm. their Pro Bowl left tackle, is now with the Baltimore Ravens. 
Uh, David Castro is is not playing football anymore. Pouncey's retired. I mean, it's it's all three of those guys, Pro Bowl players. Is the offensive line in transition at this stage? You know, I think that um, anytime you get uh, you know that much change and and you lose, you know, you could say what you want. You might have some gold jackets up there <laughs> that retired. You know, Pouncey and Castro. Who, who knows? But uh, um, I. I, I uh, you know, those guys are working through it. You know, they're, they're, um, you know, we're just getting into uh, studying them now. And, but they're, they are, they are playing together well. Um, you know, like everybody, they, they, they can do things, I'm sure, that they would want to have a few things back and do things differently. But, uh, you know, they still got a ton of weapons and they're, they're still the Steelers. And it's, uh, it's always a challenge to go in there and win. But uh, our guys are focused on that right now. Let's talk the uh, Chicago Bears game a little bit more, Coach. Transition back to that one. And um, Hendrickson, uh, on the, on that third down play, I mean, he's got fields in his sights, and he looked mm. like he was trying to tackle, the, you know, get the ball out instead of maybe wrapping around the legs. And, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. But mm. in that situation, uh, do you have a preference? Well, I mean, you know, listen, we want to get the guy on the ground. That's the bottom line. But, you know, we're always preaching uh, – you know, get the ball off him. The ball was exposed. You know, we certainly, again, we want, we, you know, we know what's at stake there and we, and we just got to get the guy on the ground. And that's what's most important. Um, but uh, Trey, Trey had a heck of a game. He was, he was pressuring and, uh, you know, he's going to make that play nine out of 10 times. I have all the faith in the world in Trey Hendrickson. Yeah. I mean, you talk about Hubbard and Hendrickson coach, man, and the entire defensive line. I, I think if I had to pick, pick a position group, uh, from from top to bottom in terms of depth and what they're giving you, I, I don't think there's a better position group than your defensive line has performed the first couple of weeks here. Well, they, they've all made uh, impact plays uh, in each of the first two games. You know, you got Larry Okunjobi, who's uh, so far doing a great job both in the run and in the pass game and getting penetration and, you know, we're getting some TFLs to get the offense off schedule and, you um, you know, you don't you don't always have to be perfect on your fits when got when that happens, you know, and he's he's done a great job disrupting. But uh, across the board, DJ Reader, I can't you know ex- tell you how well he's playing. And, you know, Josh Tupau comes in and you, know, you got B.J. Hill and then the edge guys, you know, it's it's um, so far so good. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that, that's that's pretty good quality right there. And, and it's showing. I mean, they, they play so hard. I mean, that, that's that's obviously something that you must be preaching because your entire defensive unit. I mean, man, everybody's given full effort every single snap. I mean, it's you know, there's there's going to be plays made on people, and then you know, because the other guys get paid too. But yeah. the mistakes are minimal, aren't they, Coach? So far, yeah. They, and again, they have a great feel for each other. The players do, and, and they don't want to let each other down. And um, you know, so you know hustling and sprinting to the ball and taking the proper pursuit angles. We've done a good job with that. You know, the first game against Minnesota, I thought we tackled uh, extremely well. We had uh, we were the, we had the fewest missed tackles in the league the first game. Not quite as good yesterday. Uh, we got to do better there. Um, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll ratchet it back up this week against the Steelers. You know, I, I've, I've heard, uh, you know, you talk about um, put out the fire. You know, it's like an, you're an emergency fire department and wherever the fire is, you got to go put it out. Yeah. And no matter what the field position is, I mean, guys are buying into what you're talking about. They, they you know, they've got to pick six on an interception. Then another interception, first and goal at the nine-yard line. You guys just bow your necks, man, and, uh, you know, field goal opportunity. That's all they get out of it. So it's like the fire was put out. I mean, guys are, are responding to what you're trying to get done there. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, again, the sudden change stuff, um, nobody wants to be in those – situations obviously but uh you know i thought our guys handled it well they didn't flinch and that's what's you know most important you know um is that um you don't flinch and uh you know i think that uh, you know they they showed their you know like you said they they bowed up and in all the situations and and uh, did not let them uh, score a touchdown you know which uh some of those field positions they could have and and our, our guys fought and it was it was um, it was good i was happy with it you know, the first uh, two football games, it's been uh, Indian summertime, you know, like pretty hot out there on the field to play uh, here in Cincinnati against Minnesota and then up in Chicago. The football team uh, on the defensive side is well conditioned. I mean, obviously, you got uh, you got guys that have dedicated themselves in that aspect of it, too. 
Yeah, I think they are. I think it's also nice that we, we, we're rolling some guys and, um, you know, that always helps so that the snaps aren't quite as high as they, uh, they could be. And, and having depth to do that is a, is a major plus. And it'll, it'll only pay dividends down the road where as we get in later in the season, middle in the season where guys aren't just totally, um, you know, beat to heck. And, and uh, you know, because they, they probably would have had 40 or 50 more snaps at that time. You know, we're doing it. You know, we're doing a good job of trying to uh, roll those guys through, and I think it's helping. Coach, I, I guess I don't expect you to respond or answer this or comment or whatever, but I just got to get on my soapbox for a second about this taunting stuff. I mean, back in the day, it's like if, if the officials were to call flags every time somebody was talking to an opponent, you know, the way guys are talking now, it, the game would have never been played. I'm not saying that that you know. Turn, turn it into that type of deal where everybody's jawing at each other back and forth. But, man, you know, do you think the pendulum – well, I guess I'm asking you a question. Can the pendulum <laughs> swing back? Has the pendulum swung a little bit too far, and can it swing back a little bit? Because you know, I just think uh, – here's how I what I think of that. I, it's the rule, and we have to obey it. And right. we got to find – all we tell our guys is you make a play, find your teammate, and celebrate with him. Forget about – the other guy doesn't exist. And uh, – they're throwing the flags. That's evident. So you know that's what the that's what the league wants, and and we'll obey the rules. We got to get back in the, again, find your teammate, celebrate with him, and get back in the huddle and move on. That's it. You know, defense uh, in, in, in any level, you know, stop the run, control expo explosives, and you've done a pretty good job of that. I mean, there haven't been a whole lot of big plays, you know, registered against you, and then and then uh, win the turnover battle. You know, you you got two takeaways. I know you'd probably like to have. More than that, after a couple of weeks, but uh, it, it, turnovers are—it's it, always, no matter the time frame, the year, or whatever. Man, if, if you lose the turnover battle, it's hard to win football games, isn't it? Yeah, especially on the road. You know, anytime. You know, forget road home, but especially. Uh, you know, you—you've you, got to. We've got to force more. You know, we've got to get a. We've got to do a better job of uh, continuing to strip at the ball. You know, um, and force those fumbles. That's something that we're you know hanging our hat on and. You know, we have to get we have to continue to do that and uh, you know I, I want to make sure that uh, you know the guys and the guys do know it and they're they're consciously working at it we just we, we got to get some more off them and uh, they put the effort in they just got to do it red zone in the last uh, game you know they, they, they got in there three times only scored one touchdown that's that's pretty pretty good ratio uh, third down er are there any areas, you know, critical areas like that that you'd like to see uh, some kind of improvement? Yeah, we got to do better on third down. Um, you know, I'm not happy with the, you know, we give up a, a five yard hitch route, they get a first down, and on third and long, you know, things like that. Uh, I, there's room for improvement. Um, excuse me, in every area, but uh, right now, I think, um, you know, that's one where we've got to we've got to pick it up, and when we get them to those third downs, you know, like on the first drive. Their only touchdown scoring drive, they converted three third, third downs, and one is a third down red zone scoring uh, play. And you can't have those; those will kill you. Uh, you get them the third down, you got to get off the field, or if you're in the red zone, force them to kick a field goal. And um, you know that's uh, you know that's we did not do that on the first drive. Um, we, we've got to execute better on once it gets to third down. One thing that you have done though on third down, coach, is in in the first two games. You've had like third and ten or more. I'm thinking a handful of times, and usually it takes a few mm -hmm. games to get that situation. You've been getting people way off schedule, you know, multiple times in the first couple of battles. I think, I think it uh, again. It goes back to those guys up front disrupting the run game and getting, getting those, um, you know, those off schedule plays for the offense where you know we're tackling a run in the backfield for three or four yard loss. And now they're they're playing behind you know the sticks the the rest of that series so um, you know that's got to continue and um, you know we're not going to make a season on third and twelve um, you'd love to but you know how that goes uh, it's not going to be reality but uh, just we got we just got to when we're in those third mediums we got to win those downs you know we expect to win the third and ten pluses uh, but those third and mediums we, we got to win more of those. Uh, quarterback run game, uh, obviously Fields is a factor. You know, I mean, he he leaked out on on one, obviously a critical one. And Andy Dalton is is a little bit more mobile than people give him credit for. And he, you know, he leaked out on on one or two. Uh, but Cousins, Cousins, that wasn't a big part of his game. It's not a big part of Ben's game. 
do you game plan differently depending on the quarterback or is it just pretty much here's your keys, you know, read it out? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. The guys are more, you know, totally aware of when Justin Fields was in the game as opposed to Andy in terms of the zone read plays, you know, the, the, the really um, executed well on the one low red called the quarterback run where he pulled it and Cheeto made the tackle yep. on the sideline, on their sideline. But, you know, the, the – uh, Scramble plays, we have to do a better job, uh, you know, with our rush discipline, our rush lanes, and and that'll clean some of that up, you know. But uh, so far, so good on the the actual call, the quarterback runs. We've done a good job. I think we talked about this before, Coach, but you know, uh, on the in the back end, I mean, there's got to be nobody's more anxious to see you or, or to see Trey Wayne's on the football field than you. I mean, <laughs> this kid. I mean, when he was out there during uh, practices at training camps, like, dude. The dude can cover. He's long. He's physical. I mean, he just but he's he's having uh, injury issues. Uh, ho- hopefully, uh, are we looking at this week or is it too early to tell, Coach? Uh, yeah, I, I wish I had. I wish I could tell you. Uh, right. You know, right. I'm not sure, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed and uh, go from there. You know, again, Eli's man in the position uh, right now, and um, you know, we'll 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 see how it goes with Trey. I just don't know yet. What about your uh, your safety play, the Killer Bees? Uh, you know, you got uh, Jesse Bates and Von Bell. What are they providing for you, Coach? Just stability. I think part of the reason, you know, you, you mentioned, well, you know, yesterday they had one play of 20 yards or more, you know, really no explosive, one, the 130 yard of the week before. And if you have good safety play, generally speaking, that doesn't, that th- those big plays don't occur. And those guys have been working hand in hand with each other and so far so good. So, you know, they're communicating well, getting the guys lined up on the back end, and, uh, you know, super happy with uh, what, what those guys are doing so far. So let's get back to Pittsburgh then uh, for, for a little bit here, Coach, down the stretch. And appreciate the time that you're no, no on, a, on a busy day. The click okay. is right here, just uh, right here. It, it, you, <laughs> you're, you're, in the, you're, in the, you're in the process of breaking yeah. it all down, huh? Yeah. So they, they have a new offensive coordinator. They got some new players, you know, up front. Um, in, in skill players as well. Does it look like the same Pittsburgh Steelers? Does it look like a big difference in the Pittsburgh Steelers and how they're trying to attack you offensively? I mean, they have some some uh, new wrinkles. I, I think at the end of the day, when you have a quarterback like Ben, you know, who's such a great player and who has been there so for his entire career for so long, he's going to have what he likes uh, and he knows works. And you can see the elements – of the plays <clears throat> that over the years that 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 he likes to to call and run, um, so I see that. You know, I see some new wrinkles, but uh, at the end of the day, I, you know, it's it's still the Steelers' offense, and and uh, you know, Ben is going to have a he- heavy hand on what goes on there, in my opinion. So I, I just uh, thinking thinking ahead a little bit. The Jacksonville Jaguars are next. That's a Thursday night game. How the heck do you coaches? With a Thursday, a short week like that, I mean, you, you almost have to, as as you're working on Pittsburgh, you have to think about, you know, look break Jacksonville down a little bit because there's only X number of hours before that before that next game. Is it an advantage to have a division opponent where you feel like you've got some kind of handle on what they do when you have a short week like that the following week? Um, you know, I, I just know the that all of our attention is on the Steelers and. Right. Um, you know, and, and solely on on them. Um, you know, we'll wait to the end of the week um, to start. You know, talking about uh, the Thursday night game, um, and that's kind of generally speaking. No matter who you're playing the week before, there's a there's a process there of normally. Um, you know, on a Friday or Saturday, uh, you would knock some stuff out, um, but now you're actually game planning on a Friday or Saturday for the following opponent, um, which which uh, you know, you have to because you're, <laughs> you know, the game's on Thursday. So, uh, but, but we'll, we got, you know, we've been doing it a long time. We know the process of it. And, but right now the players, the coaches, I don't want anybody thinking about anything other than the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's, what's most important. So I know you haven't put together the game plan yet. You're still in the process of breaking everything down and you're putting together today. Tonight I know it's going to be a long night coach tomorrow. And then you present it to the, to the players <laughs> on, on uh, Wednesday. What do you think, though, your past experiences with the Pittsburgh Steelers? If you have to give me three keys, three musts that are, you know, unconditional to be able to compete against the Pittsburgh Steelers, what kind of things are they? 
you got to make them one dimensional. I mean, if they're running it and throwing it, 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 it can be a long day. Uh, ben has seen, uh, you know, all kinds of disguises. And so he's going to generally get them in the right play. Um, <clears throat> so the guy's got to know, hey, what's the weakness of this coverage or, or that pressure and knowing that Ben will probably attack it. Um, you know, and then he gets the ball out faster than anybody in, in the uh, in the NFL. So, you know, getting our hands up up front, you may not get there, but batted balls are always a key part of it. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, just handling their playmakers and don't let them get any shot plays, I think that that's critical. You know, Coach, you've got some uh, some smart players as well as physically talented players. Is a, is a big challenge to you giving these guys – you know, as many tools that they can put in their tool belt as possible. I mean, you've got some guys that are responding to you. They're buying what you're selling. So is it fun thinking about, man, what can I do to make this guy even uh, take him to another level as a player? Yeah, it's great. I mean, and, and as you mentioned, as before we took, I told the group this morning, I said before we took the field, before the last uh, drive when we, when we had to stop them, um, you know, they're, all their eyes are were focused on, you know, getting that done and, you know, we've just came up a little bit short, but, uh, you know, to me, it's uh, all of their games are expanding with uh, each week and each game. And, you know, I look forward to working with the guys going forward. And, and just like you said, you know, having, having uh, the players do some things that, uh, you know, they ordinarily wouldn't do, um, but put them in positions to be successful. And you got a, you got a young football team that's uh, a lot of them in their, you know, beginning primes their careers and, and when you think about what they can, you know, ramp up and develop into, I, it's it's real exciting. I mean, this defensive football team is fun to watch. And uh, again, I think I think the biggest thing is they play so hard, and that's uh, that's credit to you and your coaches. No, pretty, yeah, the coaches do a great job, and uh, you know they're 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 on the guys, and and it's just kind of our standard and uh, how we go about business, and and that can never change. And and the good news about that is. That they they've taken ownership of that part of it and uh, the players that is, <clears throat> so they hold each other accountable and and they know what it's supposed to look like and and we just got to keep going. Coach can't thank you enough for carving time during a busy day to Problem. visit with us in the trenches. Um, it's a uh, it's been a, a, a real pleasure and an honor, and uh, good luck and put put together a great one, Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, always, man, always I remember fun. Those days. I remember always those days. fun. I can't wait to uh, fourth quarter and uh, Renegade comes on, so we'll be ready. <laughs> there you go. All right. There All you right. go. Have a great one, Coach. Appreciate right. you. See you. Hi, Dave Lapham here. Have you heard about In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics? Catch new episodes from the world of sports and broadcasting. Search for In the Trenches with Dave Lapham on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts.